Why are there two different versions of Microsoft Teams? Well, if I go to the Start button in Windows 11, and this also can work in Windows 10, and I'll click on All Apps, and I'll scroll down to Microsoft, or the M's here, and we can see two different teams. So one just says Microsoft Teams, the other one says Work or School. So if you have a business email address that, say, is being hosted by Microsoft 365 or maybe on an Exchange server, then this is the Teams that you want. Want. It's gone ahead and used my login account. I have a test account, uh, Lita at externalcorp.onmicrosoft.com. It's just something I created as a test account. And it's in my corporate Microsoft 365 account. So it went ahead and used that to automatically log me in. If you've logged in with a personal account, then it will prompt you for the username and password. And it also works in the other direction as well. So if I go ahead and go back to my Start button, and I go back to all apps and I go down to Microsoft Teams and I choose this other version here, which is for personal. If you've logged in with a personal account, it will automatically log you in. You'll be good to go. But again, since I've logged in with a business account, it's now prompting me to sign in. So if I try to sign in with that business account, watch what happens. So I've typed it in, I click next. It says you can't sign in here with a work or school account. You've got to use a personal account. So this would be an account, say, that you created at Outlook.com rather than Microsoft 365, or say an old AOL address, a Yahoo address, anything that's considered personal. Even a Gmail account, as long as it ends in gmail.com, is considered a personal account. Now, if you're using Google to host your corporate email, then you wouldn't put a gmail.com and you wouldn't use this program. You would use the other Teams. This free version of Teams that automatically comes with Windows 11 now doesn't have all the same features that the full version of Microsoft Teams has. You also can't control it using the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. This is what the Admin Center looks like. And if I go to the Teams Admin Center, it opens up all these different things that I can use to control Microsoft Teams in a corporate environment. So for instance, I can approve team devices, team applications, things that you cannot run in a personal Teams type of account. And this is typically what your sysadmin or IT administrator would set up in your account if you're using Microsoft 365 Teams for business. But again, this is something you cannot use if you're using that home version of Teams. So I'm gonna log into it and you can take a look at how it's different from the corporate version. And here's the setup. We can see on the left-hand side, the corporate one, I can create a team, I can join a team. Um, I do have chat and activity. I can also click here to make phone calls. And I can actually make real phone calls to other people using uh, regular phone numbers, but I have to buy a certain plan in order to get that to work. And then I have to configure it in the admin center as well. On the right hand side, you can see I've only got a few things here. I've got the activity, the chat, which is the same chat as the one you see over there. And then I've got the calendar. And in this personal one, I can certainly make calls to other people who are Teams members, whether they're personal or business, it doesn't matter. But I can't make actual phone calls. So for instance, I can click on Meet Now and it will come up with a meeting and then I can go ahead and put in the name of the people. And that actually works the same way as it does in the corporate one as well. So you have two different teams, two different types of teams, two different types of email accounts that you sign in with, and then you can go ahead and use Teams based on which version you're using. Of course, the corporate one is going to have a lot more options.